Well, hello there, humans, bees, earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about the T29, uh, and I'm doing a lot of American tanks at the moment because I think they're great fun, and I've got to be honest, this is one of the first lines I ever went up. In fact, it is indeed the very first line I went up, and the reason being was I came from a game called uh, Battleground Europe, World War II Online, I, I think, um, Cornered Rat Software made it, and it was... Uh, all about getting your tank hull down. And it was a very different world of tanks uh, in that that game itself. But so when I turned up in this game, I first looked at all the tanks and said, what's got the best turret armor? Because I know how to do really well at tanks. It's just to go hull down. And indeed, this was the first tank I ever rode out in that I did a, a really... Well, I had a good win rating. That was the T29. So it's nostalgia for me. And you can see here I'm playing it as a hull down tank. And... That really is the absolute secret of this tank, but there's a little bit more involved in it that you probably don't realize. Uh, it's a very long wheelbase, and by that I mean you can see as you go up the, the tree, the, the length of the tank compared to its peers seems to shorten up. The M103, the T110E5, they both seem to be denser, more compressed tanks that have a taller profile. Whereas the T29 and then the T34, the Tier 8 premium that everyone so loves and is actually a very, very good tank in and of itself, well, they're quite different. Um, this is, in fact, one of the best hull down tanks in the game, but it can also side scrape. Even though it doesn't have a particularly strong armor profile on the uh, the edges, like uh, the Tiger P that you can see next to it, for instance, it's got such a long set of tracks that if you can keep your angles correct um, against so many of the smallish caliber guns that you run up against at this tier, then you can get auto bounce zones going very, very comfortably. I mean, for instance, at 201 there he's he's going to be firing a very low caliber gun um and you you might say well that only works against low caliber guns well there's not a lot of massive caliber weapons at this tier and that means you're not going to get overmatched and the overmatch mechanic basically if they can uh and it, look all you need to know is if they've got three times the caliber Three times the amount of armor you've got on your side with the gun, they're going to overmatch you. That's a, a really easy rule. To, I don't want to go down this rabbit hole because the mechanics of overmatching are different from PC to Blitz, but they're similar enough and it doesn't really make any difference. Just know that you can side scrape this tank a little bit unless they've got like an SU-152, in which case just don't be in the way and you shouldn't be side scraping that tank anyway. And you've got to be careful about getting your deck HE. But in a pinch, you can see that you can angle this tank up at a really nice defensive side scrape kind of zone and then we talk about the turret and the hull down factor and the hull down is really quite exceptional it's also more mobile than people give it credit for because although it's not as mobile as say an m103 or a t110e5 those tanks are up against tanks that are actually pound for pound uh way more mobile than a lot of the tanks you're going to get at this tier so that means that, I mean, that, and that's anecdotal. That's not, I don't like have a spreadsheet of this stuff. You just will find that as you progress up the tiers, everyone else gets better as well. Or vehicle wise, they, they get better as well. And you can see I'm moving back here so that all is really visible. That poor old bloke down there in the uh, bash horn is my very, very massive turret. Now, the turret armor on this just behoves you to get your ass out and find a place that is actually physically good for you to go hull down in. I'm going to show you a game from my mate, the Shameless Reroll, in just a second, uh, where he is running the T29 on the Dorf. But I'm going to show you me running the T29 on the Dorf first. Um, and this is something that I wanted to really highlight because this is a tactic that I use a lot when I'm running uh, all kinds of different tanks with very, very strong turrets like T-34s or, you know, T-110E3s. Now, look how I've got my gun up in the air and I'm waggling my uh, gun around. And even though it's not the most accurate gun, if you have enough time, you can, you know, get the shots to hit. And do you see how I'm moving the gun around? It makes it harder for tanks up the other end to hit the top of the turret, to hit that hatch like that, like that Nash horn just did. It's not impervious and it's not impossible, but it's a good tactic to swing that gun around up in the air so that that top turret is just harder to hit. And then again, we're going to side scrape out here, get an angle on that VK, looks all good. 
So let's have a look at uh, the push here now. And this is where you're going to notice you're just going to take damage. If you show your lower glacis and upper glacis, you're going to take damage. Because unlike uh, some of the other tanks in this tree, like the T32, for instance, is massively underrated with how strong the chassis of that tank is. The T29 just does not have that. I mean, against uh, tier 6 medium, great. You're going to be able to bounce a shot. But no one expects a tier 6 medium to have incredible standard ammunition pen for a tier, eight, tier 7 heavy. That's just not what you, you're um, really bargaining for. And here comes the shameless reroll. Taking the same route I just took, um, one of the things about Himmelsdorf is if you go the heavy route and you're in a hull down tank, going on the outside can sometimes just be painfully boring because you'll get TDs at the very, very back and once they realise that they're not going to pen you easily, they just won't come out and then all the action will take place on this inside rail here. Now, the re-roll is actually pushed up, which is, I think, a really good move. A really good move because you can see there are so many uh, tanks on the western flank pushing basically what is going to be the rest of his team. Um, and they're going to get rolled pretty hard and they know that there's a C cap going on. So it's a good move to, to roll up here towards spawn. What you're not expecting is a Tiger P to be sitting at the back in his spawn. And that... That little bit of damage there was a bit weird. You wouldn't really expect that. The Tiger P may well have just been on the way back around here. Gets lucky with a big roll into the side there that was a bit of a snapshot. They often won't come out. You can see Shameless is setting up for the side scrape here. Great moves. And the Churchill, which is uh, really peeking and poking out sideways, has a very low caliber gun. So this is the perfect tank to do this against. And you can see big bounce there off the uh, 75 millimeter or the 20 pounder, depending whether you subscribe to the metric system or not, like the rest of the world. Thanks very much, America. Uh, this Churchill is also firing at the wrong part of the tank, but that's probably because he can't get the bloody gun down. One of the failures of that particular build, uh, the gun depression is an error 404 not found, went up close and personal, and you can see the Shameless now punching through to the C cap. Three on four, uh, things are looking a little bit dim, but very nice, very optimistic shot there too, by the way. Super optimistic. Shameless just working the hull here, keeping it down low, making sure that there is an opportunity to get the cap on. Uh, and the KV-2 is a little bit sideways here, which is a worry. If he pokes out, he's going to be in strife. Uh, Shameless is absolutely in the perfect spot there if that Nash Horn climbs, and he does. Absolutely a terrible idea. And this is the T29's bread and butter. Um, targets coming in as it stays hull down, relatively safe, very, very tough armor profile, especially for the tanks that are left, uh, and just eating them alive, really farming up the damage there. That T43 in a tough spot. Whoa! -ho -ho! And the Comet duking a shot out of Shameless there as he pulled it back and it just flew through both the targets and landed harmlessly against the back wall. And there's the gun. I mean, you don't expect a tank like this to have a pinpoint weapon. Indeed, it doesn't. It's got enough uh, of a... I mean, it's got enough of an alpha strike that it really does scare off a lot of people. And that there is a great example of angling and dangling. But... I mean... We know what's happening here. The the enemy reds are just hit point trading now and pushing in. And Shameless is slowly bleeding away as the uh, the bad boys roll up. Wants to finish off that T-43. Takes a shot. Might have been better advice just to whack one into the Comet there. The Nash Horn is super low. Here he goes. Now he can afford to take one shot from the Comet. Doesn't want to. But he's, uh, he's going to try and make a trade. The Comet bounces a shot that he really should have hit. Even going to APCR there would have been perfect for him because then he could have got away before the uh, other shot came in and he could have won that hit point trade. Two APCR shots would clear just as easily as two AP shots. Uh, and the Comet now is going to do the right thing, unfortunately, and bugger off and win this on cap, which is brutally, brutally heartbreaking for the shame. But... Uh, you can't blame the Comet for not wanting to get his uh, skull pounded in. He's going to take his show on the road and just win this one very, very comfortably moving away. That was the last opportunity there. And the Comet 
absolutely not interested in coming second, does the right thing and rolls off into the wild blue yonder and shameless force to chase. Not a chasing tank, uh, but good game all the same. Uh, three and a half K. There's going to be a mastery and a defeat there and well-deserved. Lots of bounces and really showcasing the way the tank can be played, both hull down and in open uh, areas with the angling. Great tank, great line, in fact. Something you should probably invest in. And it teaches you to play with a fragile chassis as well as a strong turret. I'm Bushka. Thanks for watching. Look after yourselves. Remember to subscribe and like the videos. Stick around for the live streams. And as always, stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.